Hey, everybody. So if you have been hanging out with us for the last couple seasons of the podcast, you probably remember us mentioning Flaw Tootie in our past episodes. Our friend Molly Sharp, who incidentally was also a guest in season one, started Vla Tutti to share her awesome duet arrangements of standard viola rep, which are great for teaching. And it has now grown into a wide ranging catalog of one of a kind resources for violists and beyond. Steph, do you remember when we played one of the duets from a holiday bundle together? Yes, it's one of my most cherished holiday memories. Aww. But actually one of my favorites is something that all string instrumentalists would love. It's called Making Double Stops Ring, a guided exploration of just intonation. And Molly actually shared the viola version with us last year. And I am not exaggerating when I say that it completely changed the way I think about intonation. No one has ever explained it to me like this before. I think that we all realize on some level that a B in all situations is not the same, but why? Yeah. Have you ever had that classic argument in a string quartet setting when you're trying to oh, tune yes. a chord and and maybe we're playing that B and we're being told, no, it needs to go lower. No, it needs to go higher. It needs to go here. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be amazing to save all those hours for our string quartet students with no debate? We just know where it's supposed to go. Everyone agrees because there's only one way. <laughs> right. You can just gift them copies of this book. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Nothing personal. Just here's a book about intonation. <laughs> Well, Molly has made it easy for all of us to play in tune. So whether you play viola, violin, cello, or bass, there's a version for you. You can find this pragmatic book, viola duet arrangements of classic viola repertoire, and so much more at VLATUTTI.com under Marketplace, or look in this episode's show notes. Welcome to the Musician-Centric Podcast. We are two freelance violists living and laughing our way through conversations that explore what it means to be a professional musician in today's world. I'm Steph. And I'm Liz. And we're so glad you've joined us. Let's dive in. Our new generation Tuning of... <laughs> Tuning in. Like, what are they doing? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's the recap that nobody asked for, but we're doing it a second season. <laughs> <laughs> so even though you didn't ask for it, we're back. <laughs> some of you may have like kind of hinted that you wouldn't mind us doing it. We know some of you listen, so <laughs> don't try and deny it. Yeah. It, and so we're, we're like enjoying ourselves, um, to new musician centric listeners, Welcome to season two. We uh, recorded season one last season, last year, and um, we had a lot of fun doing it. Uh, I will admit, I was like all prepared to love to hate it the whole season, and then I ended up kind of like enjoying it by the end. So if you're resistant like me, like just give it a chance. That's all I'm going to say. Um, yeah. And now I was very, I was very happy to be watching it again. It felt like coming home. <laughs> Yeah, it's like putting on your cozy sweats. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Being entertained by all our old friends. Yes, and wondering what happened to them in the interim. That's right. So, yeah. So, so should we kick right in? Let's season go. Season two premiere. Season two premiere. With a, with a not, I don't love the rebrand of the intro. The intro. Well, you know, I kind of caught a glimpse on accident of season three, the intro is different again. Ah, because so it must just be something they they just change. Oh, they just change it. They they do a rebrand every year. Yeah, <laughs> must must be nice to have that kind of time. <laughs> oh my gosh, can you imagine doing a rebrand every year? time and resources? <laughs> no, you you guys get like one rebrand. Re this is it. <laughs> this is it. You're stuck with this logo forever <laughs> in perpetuity. <laughs> in perpetuity. Yes. Um. So yeah, it was really good to like see everybody again. I I literally, I literally wrote, "Oh, here we go" in my notes the first. Thing. <laughs> oh, here we go, Rodrigo. Yeah, so we have like a a see a scene change. We're in L.A. all of a sudden for some reason, which becomes yeah. revealed I think pretty quickly why we're in yes. why we're in L.A. But first, Rodrigo's talking to his muse. Oh yeah, did we decide that that was Mozart initially? 
I think so, but why does he have a French <laughs> accent? exactly what I wanted to know. <laughs> so he's, he's talking with this bewigged, makeup, obviously figment of his imagination. And I always thought it was Mozart. Me too. Like when he was studying the manuscript last year, it was a Mozart manuscript. And was that the same dude? Is it the same actor? Oh, we should find out. Maybe he just okay. maybe he's just visited by various 18th century. <laughs> okay, ghosts. So you know, like Chopin is coming up. <laughs> We're gonna see the different people. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Okay. That's right. Like maybe right. that's what it. Yeah, maybe it was somebody. Schubert wasn't French, right? No, he was like Austrian, 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 German, or something. I was trying to tie it to something in the episode, but no, it didn't make any sense. But it was funny, like the conversation all around. It's basically his inner critic. That's exactly what I wrote. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love that he's like apologizes for not having breakfast, and he's like cranky with his inner critic. <laughs> yeah, it's hey. it's all very good. Um, but I just I have an important question about my guy because you know how much I love Rodrigo. Why with the rat tail? He looks so it's good. It's migrated. Yeah. Why is it on the side of his head? Why is it still there? Like he could just cut it off and then it'd be he'd look so great, like all around. He's got the scruff going, know. the short hair, like I'm with you. <sighs> I'm over the rat tail. <laughs> it... I think we get the idea. He rides a bike, he wears bohemian clothes. He, you know, you don't need the rat tail to cap it all yeah, off. Yeah, because it's like not 1997. No, <laughs> no. And it's clearly like a clip-in deal. <laughs> I mean, did you ever, when you were, <laughs> clip, when you were clip like in middle school? Little... <laughs> yes. Yeah, you could buy it at the beach, right? <laughs> yes. Well, you know, like there's like a spark. You have like one little lock of pink or whatever yes. in your hair. You just clip in when you feel spicy so does that mean it was the same one as last year and he just moved it to another part of his head <laughs> oh no i think we're supposed to believe that he's whimsical and he can grow out his hair grow out a random strip. enough to make enough to make a giant rat tail on a different part of his head <laughs> and then shave i will it all tell again. you no one's hair grows that fast <laughs> okay yeah it's supposed to be like two and a half months later. Like how, I don't understand. It's, I don't, no. I just, I think I'm really going to be excited when it goes. It has to go, right? Eventually it's going to go. I don't know. <sighs> I hope so. But so why are we in LA? Because Rodrigo is guest conducting the LA Phil. <laughs> At least that's who it looks like. And it looks like the real LA Phil. Yeah, I think it is. Like, yeah, okay. I love this so much. Because the sound engineer in the back is Dudamel himself. Is Dudamel. <laughs> so now all those comparisons can be validated. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's just really funny. They're, they're kind of being coy with Dudamel because everyone knows that this is the actual conductor. Yeah. So there's a bunch of like sly little comments yep. like about how they hate their conductor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But we find out that the NYSO mm -hmm. is in labor negotiations, and there's a rumor that they might strike if they don't get it resolved. Yes, so. big topical event going on. Yeah, labor negotiations right. and strikes. Um, so we then we get to go travel back to New York after this lovely mm -hmm. little cameo. And I do think it was L.A. Phil. They sounded great. <laughs> if it was, they sounded good great. Job. They looked like they were playing. They looked like real musicians. <laughs> You know what? He looked like he was having just a lot of fun he did. because the people in front of him were actually playing the music that he was conducting. Yeah, it's like when um, it's like when people get to like pay to donate yes. and they get to conduct the Stars and Stripes forever, and yeah. <laughs> and they just have this. The best thing is, even if the conductor's baton is going like in the opposite direction, they just have this look of utter joy on their face. They're just like yeah. so happy to be there. Yeah, they're like riding the best ride. Yes, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's so. True. He had that look, and so very cool. I was hope I was just fantasizing that that was the reason. Why. I think so because it was just so yeah. joyful. I agree. I think it. I think it really was. I think he was just like having a great time. It was hard to hide yeah. the joy. Um, mm -hmm. Speaking of hiding the joy or not hiding the joy, <laughs> then we go to the softball team, the New York Symphony softball team, named uh -huh. Wolf Gang, the Wolf Gang. <gasps> And they're playing against the ballet team. I didn't catch their name, did you? Yes, it was the ball in jeans. <laughs> <laughs> Two separate words. Ball was the first word. 
<laughs> Amazing. I love it. It's so clever. And, um, and it was so funny because Haley's like up to pitch and then the, the ballet guy runs over and he's like, no, 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 she's a sub. She can't pitch <laughs> only when she's playing with the orchestra. <laughs> And he's like, oh, sorry, sorry, Haley, you got to wait until you're playing Mahler in a couple weeks to play with us. Yeah, that was kind of ridiculous. It's so stupid. I mean, the whole thing is stupid. Like, I don't know. I would love to know if professional orchestras have softball leagues. I don't, It seems risky. Like, totally. That's a good way to jam a finger. Yeah. And they did. When, the, when Rodrigo shows up, somebody's like, oh, yeah, everyone's being very careful. Uh-huh. Yeah. So he shows up. And... Um, Union Bob, <laughs> Union Bob, the piccolo player is there and, um, and he, ba- they basically like have a little talk during a break and they realize that um, their softball team is actually kind of close to be playing, making the playoffs. <laughs> so Rodrigo's like, oh, hey, do you need help? You need a pitcher? And so he jumps in. Yeah. And it turns out that he's actually very, very good, and he helps the team. And they win and build some rapport with the musicians. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. It's a like a. It's kind of a fun scene. I was just thinking about like, I don't know. We've been doing this lately too. Getting like when you get together with your musician colleagues just to do something fun, and it's always kind of refreshing, you know, to have that yeah. time outside of work. Right. You can relate with them. Yeah. As real people yeah. and not just one facet of your personality. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. And then we cut to a scene with, I wrote, oh, good Lord. I know. So Alex is back. I know. I, and he they're still together. I think they're- Him and Hailey. Yeah. I think they're going to caricaturize him this year. I don't know why. I feel like that first scene was just, he's like doing this really perky, like, he starts out with like, hi, I'm Alex and I'm a Sagittarius. And then he like runs down the stairs and he does these silly dance moves. And I wrote, no. <laughs> yeah, super cringy. This is super cringy. Dance video <laughs> that they're making. Is he auditioning for something? Yes. I didn't catch that. Okay, okay. I think so. So he's he's auditioning for something. Yeah. And um, so he's very over the top. It seemed like Haley was was saying to him, at the end, like, oh, you're totally going to get it or whatever. Like it was, it was a submission for something, but yeah, it was just kind of lame. Yeah. So we, we come to learn that they're t- still together. That's right. I think that was the point of that. Yes. Yeah. Cause of course we were left hanging with the question mark at the end of last season of what's going to be going yep. on in her love life. The start of this season. Yeah. Yeah. And it's still Alex. And then we know, we see that Thomas is back. Yep. We flash to Thomas in his apartment. He's got his little vision board of composers. And he's saying good morning to I them. Which I love very much. He said good morning to them. I loved it. <laughs> um, so he's doing some composing. Yes. He said, after he said good morning to everybody, he said, get your ass on that seat and start composing, you cheeky bugger. <laughs> <laughs> you tell him, Thomas. <laughs> And then he's like gleefully composing. He's like gleefully playing the piano and writing things down. And he's like conducting himself on the floor. And he's he's having the time of his life right now. You know what? He's in flow. He's in flow. He's in peak flow state. Yes. You can't interrupt that one second. No, started. you got to go with it. You got to follow the muse. Follow the muse. <laughs> and so actually it made me wonder, is he still like mm. suffering with some kind of mental yeah. health issue i'm getting because he seemed a little manic i'm getting that impression okay i think so it might be that way we'll have to find out but i feel like i mean this is later in the episode but i feel like generally speaking he seems a little up yeah yeah okay that was my impression too yeah let's keep him in our (laughs) our hearts (laughs) thomas and then we end up, okay, this is a very telling scene uh, as to the, we're, we're over in Haley's apartment again. Yes. And um, she's practicing and her phone quacks <laughs> <laughs> with a phone call. I'm like, is that still an option? Do she, people still have an option to have their phone quack? Only one way to find tone? out. Let's see. Is it in there? It would be under hope so. sounds. Rain I mean, with all these updates, it's got to be, there've got to be some pretty crazy ones out there. 
Apple has a sense of humor. Oh, it is. <laughs> what else do they have? That's good. <laughs> they have or bad. Let's see. Auga. Good old Auga. Uh-huh. Okay. Classic. Ah. The marimba. Yeah. Okay, that's enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> now my phone's going to ring that way. And I'm going to be like, whose phone is that? <laughs> <laughs> what psychopath would choose that? <laughs> That's very funny. Okay. So anyway, she gets her phone quacks <laughs> and it's one of her students' mom. And she says that her son has head lice. <laughs> And this was very triggering for me. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You just have this. If you are a parent and you've ever dealt with head lice, oh my gosh, there is nothing. I can't imagine. Maybe like having bed bugs is about the same, <laughs> but it's that like uncomfortable, dirty feeling. And it's so helpless because you can't do anything about it. And you just have to like put all of your clothes and stuff in a plastic bag and then use separate hairbrushes and combs. And it's awful. Oh. It's awful. Oh. It's awful. Yeah. We need a support group. <laughs> Parents who've gone through lice. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's a thing, huh? It's, a thing. It, it's awful. <laughs> it's awful. Do not recommend. Yeah, that's true. I feel like the the comparison to bed bugs is very good. My sister struggled with that in New York one year, and it was oh uh, yeah to like bag the mattress. You have to do all these yes. things. I yeah. I don't under. It's so it's so disturbing. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. But anyway, <laughs> so that lesson is canceled. Yeah, but we see that Alex is there hanging out. Yeah, uh, the, I thought it was funny though when she so the. The mom calls and she's like all frantic and she's like quick getting off the phone. And Haley's trying to ask her like, but when did he? Okay. Because she's trying to find out if the last time she saw, she's like scratching her head and she's a little worried. (laughs) It is panic inducing. Yes. It makes you feel itchy even when you don't have it. Yeah, for sure. I'm sure. I'm sure that's true. Yeah. It's awful. (laughs) But Alex is there. Yeah. And he's like clipping his toenails. Ah, On the bed. Who does that? There's a trash can in front of him. It's disgusting. It's, it's clearly the honeymoon is over. Said they're <laughs> caricaturizing him. He was like not. Li- this was not his vibe at he all. Was last fine. year, yeah, he, yes. he was much more like composed. I feel like I don't know. He didn't seem like a guy who clips his toenails in bed. Maybe they no, just want us seemed... to hate him so that. Yeah, I think yeah. so. <laughs> we we want to. They want us to get icked out for poor Alex. <laughs> she she's like really irritated too. She's like, I have to yeah. practice. Yeah. She's she's got to practice the same phrase a hundred times in a row, right? <laughs> That's her method. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she can't be distracted from that. Got to just obsessively play the same thing over and over again. <laughs> hey, that's how you learn it. That's true. Pro tip. Pro tip. Repeat over and over and over and over <laughs> and over until you hurt. <laughs> <laughs> then we end up back at the hall in Haley's office. And um, she's wrapping up, you know, warming up or whatever, practicing. And this new young woman comes in and she's like, oh, hey, I'm Rodrigo's new assistant. You need to train me. Sarah Bell. Sarah Bell. So, of course, the first thing that she needs to know is how to make the mate. Yeah. 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 That's the most important thing. Yeah, and you can see by her demeanor that Haley is really become attached to Rodrigo, and these things that she thought were eccentric in the beginning are now endearing. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's a good point. She honors the she honors the mate. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, we find out that Sarah Bell is the daughter of like a guy who donated their organ, and so she's she's. She's been placed in the position through privilege <laughs> um, and is a singer songwriter, yeah. but she's, which I don't think should be poo pooed. No, that's still a musician. Yeah, exactly. I know that that like initial reaction was like a little judgmental, but we need to, yeah. we need to not do that. That's yeah. That's the thing of the past, but she, 
I forgot to say it this way. I meant to say she's a singer songwriter. Uh <laughs> that puts it she's really into the nice... upspeak. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every sentence she says sounds like this, which we find out is kind of an irritating quality in the next scene. (laughs) Yes. So in the next scene, we're in Gloria's office and Gloria is in the midst of redecorating, which is very high maintenance. And her assistant says that the the thing she chooses makes her hair look like spun gold. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. So what I think they're highlighting here is the disconnect between the... Um, managing executives and what the actual musicians are doing for sure and what they think is important. So she's trying to get Rodrigo to help the orchestra come to a, agree to what administration has put forth yep. in the nego- negotiations. Yep. And she's saying two things at once. She's first, she's saying we can't afford to pay the musicians. And then she's saying also you could help by like not, making our donors mad or whatever. So it's like oh, right. she's sort of putting it all on him, which is I think kind of a old school tactic. So I don't know. He's getting frustrated though. He's like throwing a fit about all the red tape and he just wants to make music, of course. And he's and he gets very dramatic and says if the orchestra doesn't get better as as musicians, then when they go to Latin America, he's gonna be exiled from every country. And he's like <laughs> listing off all the countries they're going to and how he won't be allowed to go back, which is cracking. It was just cracking me up because it was very dramatic. Um, and in walks Sarah Bell with his yerba mate. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. Yeah. And she pushes his buttons. He's already agitated. <laughs> and yeah. So he finds out that she's supposed to be his new assistant. Yeah. And he's like, no, this isn't. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's that time of year. We're back to school and we are back to gigging. Even if you're not mentally ready for the season, you can count on our season sponsor, Potter Violins, to get your equipment ready. When's the last time you rehaired your bow stuff? Oh, I feel like it was recently, but I bet it's been over six months. So I got to get over there and get it freshened up. Oh, and I need new backup strings and an instrument adjustment. Sounds like it might be about time. Yeah. I do love to get in there for a visit to our favorite technicians as we approach the change of season. Hmm, maybe I need a new case, too. (laughs) And as we've said before, if you need a rental instrument, they're the place to go. My daughter and many of my students rent from Potters, and the instruments are really fantastic, even the smaller violas. Yes. Get back to your music this season with confidence by visiting Potter Violins so your equipment will be ready, even if you might need a bit more of a warm up. And then we meet someone new, right? Uh, yes. Oh, yeah. Virgil. That's his name. Okay. I, c- I didn't catch it. I'm glad you caught it. Virgil. With the robot. But baby. I didn't understand what his. Um, uh, is he a musician? Is he work for the hall i didn't quite understand. i know i didn't either i mean we find out that his husband is in the orchestra right right but like i don't i don't know what he does maybe he's like a maybe he's like an executive direct no that's is that gloria no that's not gloria gloria's like president of the board i don't i don't know what all these gloria's the executive okay director so maybe he i don't know maybe he's like in operations or maybe he's also a musician okay we haven't seen him highlighted as a musician, no. but his his partner, Christoph, and he have decided that they want to start a family. So they want a child. So he's holding this disturbing robot baby <laughs> Why? that, I don't know. It's like when you were in, well, when I was in high school, <laughs> you had to like take care of an egg for yes. like a week. <laughs> yes. So it's like a fancy. <laughs> yep parenting exercise i think i think there have been schools that have used like the robot babies instead of the egg which is is that right yeah that would be like the worst if you had something that cried and needed oh, fed and stuff like that Can wasn't a real thing It'd yeah just be hard to yeah the egg was hard enough <laughs> <laughs> so that was a like a cute little scene i don't know mm-hmm. it's fine and um and then um 
he goes he, he where does he run into Haley again in there i think she i think she, okay, comes, she comes in, in. and she's like okay. you can't fire sarah bell her dad gave us the organ la la la, la. and he right and so then he's following her around saying how he doesn't want another assistant she's like you can't i can't be your assistant anymore and right yeah. Yeah, and I was with her. I mean, that's really dicey. Totally. Like you're going to be a sub and his assistant. That's like really yeah. um conflict. Blurred lines not to Lots mention the kiss. The kiss. That's right, which gets brought up in the next scene. That's right. Yeah, so they are having this heated discussion. She's like you have to you you have to have a new assistant. I can't keep doing this for you. And she's she ends up trying to go into the ladies room. And of course, Rodrigo thinks, you know, hey, there's no boundaries here. I'm going into the ladies' room too. And she's like, no way. <laughs> um, but anyway, they, he gets kicked out of the ladies' room and she finds herself in there with Cynthia. And that's our first spotting of Cynthia so far. Yeah. So Cynthia's back and she's she's a good female friend. Yes. 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 So she's in there and she's the one that says, hey, everybody's talking. People are talking about that kiss. Right. From last season. Yep. And um, Cynthia is looking out for her. She says, I'm going to squash those rumors because that's messed up. Right. Which is really nice of her. Yeah. To do. Yeah. So, yeah, I think, uh, I don't know. I guess we'll see. We don't know what's going to happen with them. But Cynthia's part picks up a little here. And it's because the lawyer for the bargaining of the contract shows up right Nina. on her motorcycle i know slash scooter yep. slash vespa i don't know that she rode she rode whatever Pittsburgh. it was <laughs> <All over Pittsburgh. laughs> it's like girl that's, how's your that's hair look that good? yeah shouldn't you have like bugs in your teeth yeah. <laughs> is this actually is this gretchen mole is that who that is I don't know who that actor okay. is. I didn't. I think it's the. Pause it at the I right think time. it's the chick from. I think it's the chick from Rounders. <laughs> Someone will have to oh, tell me if you watched. Right, if you're a Rounders fan, if it's her, I think it's. I think it's her. That's a. That's a deep cut. But yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, she's got a lot of personality, and something's happening with her and Cynthia. Yes, or she wants there to be something happening with her and Cynthia because they both effing love Bach. <laughs> yes, they do. And Nina wants a private performance on cello of Bach from Cynthia. I mean, that's sexy. Yeah. Private performance of Bach? That's it was there was some there were undertones in that little dialogue yes. for sure. Yes. Um so they're at rehearsal and this new um lawyer, her name is Nina, she's making the rounds, kind of talking with people. Clearly she's done her homework. Mm -hmm. She's there to advocate for the musicians. Um, I liked her. It's like, she was like a girl boss. Kind of came in there Definitely. and was like, yeah, had her stuff together. Yep. Um, they're starting rehearsal and then Rodrigo gives a downbeat for Schubert and they play, take me, take out me to out the to ball the ball game. game. <laughs> it's cute. Their orchestra is so cute. like happy right now. Like with him. Right. Yeah. Yes. They're, they seem yes. very thrilled. And then Kristoff walks in late. Yeah, poor Kristoff. I mean, he's taking care of a robo robot baby. <laughs> he's got his hands full. He was like muttering about adoption papers and stuff. And then, but then he like sat down. But also, I was like, well, we would never do that. Like, if you're running late, you would never be like, sorry, everyone, this happened. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> Sorry, I needed to stop at the restroom yeah. one last time before I got on stage. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> Take your seat in the back of the orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> never. Never. Never, ever. That would never happen for anybody who's listening that does not know. That would never happen. <laughs> that no. was a silly moment. But they do seem to be vibing. Yeah. With Rodrigo. Yeah. Yeah. He's telling a funny story about youth orchestra and how his conductor would throw batons at them if they were late and it chipped his tooth. And But then he was like, and then when I was eight or nine and I laughed so hard, I was like. <laughs> <laughs> so your youth orchestra experience was when you were like six yeah, or seven? Exactly. <laughs> they started young. It really made me laugh. Wherever he's from. 
Um, but then they start Schubert. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it sounds all right. It sounds decent. Yeah. It's clearly not them playing. <laughs> yeah. I still want to hear like the, you know how you can sometimes hear the, like the dance videos yes. or without the sound <laughs> or with like the original sound. That's what I want to hear. I want to hear him conducting to a bunch of like actors scratching against the <laughs> strings. Disturbing. <laughs> Where is the TikTok version of this? It's uh, a good question. Maybe it exists. Maybe. We'll put it out if there. You're, yeah. I want to hear the original, please. <laughs> the deep cut. Talk about deep cut. That would be a real deep cut. <laughs> Ah, uh, so Gloria is mingling with donors in the donor lounge. This is the next scene right before the concert. And what's his name? And Edward oh, God, is back. Guy. He's back on his BS. Yeah, that guy That guy who stole, what's her name, the former assistant from the- Sharon. Sharon. And yeah. he says to her, I need some protein. Could you find me some nuts? <laughs> And then continues this conversation with with Gloria about the orchestra failing because they nobody likes Rodrigo and blah 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 right. blah blah. And she comes back with the champagne glass of nuts for him. And he starts eating them. And Thomas comes over, which I'll let you pick uh-huh. up. But but I just laugh so hard because he's eating out of this champagne glass and then he and then he's like he just like puts it back in her direction. He's like, These are ro- <laughs> these are roasted. <laughs> like Okay, we get it. <laughs> You're very well, powerful. He clearly has no joy yeah. in his life. Who who wants unroasted nuts? Though? Gross. Who? Like it'd be so funny if he said these are unroasted. That would be more realistic. I guess. I guess it's like right. extra because he's like doesn't want roasted nuts in his champagne like, no, glass. No joy with my nuts. <laughs> I don't want any joy with my nuts. I want them to taste bland and soft and horrible. <laughs> disgusting <laughs> <laughs> just the fact the whole fact that it's like a conversation about nuts like it's just it's so ridiculous yeah yeah but yes we're meant to be left Ooh, with the, he's the villain yeah he's mean <laughs> he's, he's hard to work for well thomas comes back and he's having none of ed edward's BS <laughs> yes, about rodrigo yes. he's like you have a great conductor and i'm busy so thomas is <laughs> yes Thomas has a good, um, is a good friend. And he might, a good mentor. and he really might be a little manic. Like he, yeah. I think yeah, so. Well, that's what we're supposed I'm to composing now. I'm a composer now. That's, that's what I'm doing. And that's it. Yes. Yeah. And it, <laughs> it's so good. So good. Uh, yeah. Okay. So then the concert comes. So the performance is there. He's somehow, I was very distracted by the rat tail, the <laughs> migrated rat tail, because it's flapping around and he's in his, like, tuxedo. Like, for, should, shouldn't you have, like, a formal version of that? <laughs> Some way to make it more formal? Like, like, put it, like, put a hair tie around it? Like a bun? Like a, like a rat know, tail? Bun? like what? A okay, coil? Let's, let's just say <laughs> it's let's just say it's a, um, an actual rat tail. It is his hair. Uh-huh. Okay, so how do you make a formal version of a rat tail? Because there's nothing to, like, attach it to. It's just there. Do you, like, make a little mini bun? Like, put a clip and clip it down? I, that would be the, the most That would be the most logical thing. But I don't know if it would stay because his hair is so short. Oh, yeah. What did you clip it to? Yeah, what would you clip it? I don't know. But, yeah, it's not. it's not good. It needs to go. I really hope. I feel like more donors would be engaged again if he got rid of it. I mean, I hate to say that, but yeah, you know, you gotta. Sometimes you gotta play the part. Oh, here's another ridiculous thing that happens. <laughs> this dude. <laughs> oh yes, poor Kristoff. <laughs> no, it wasn't Kristoff, right? Was it Kristoff? Oh, I thought, I thought it was, it was just a random violinist in the back of the oh, section. Okay. Maybe. Oh, maybe it was. I thought Christoph was in the bassoons or something. No, not bassoons. Clarinets. Uh, oh, I don't either know. way, it was in that direction of the stage, though. So we'll have to we'll have to figure that out next week. But um, 
I mean, his phone goes off like in the middle of the concert. And not only does it go off, but he like pulls it out and puts it while they're playing. (laughs) So ridiculous. Yeah. Not a thing. That's not a thing. No. And if your cell phone goes off, you do everything in your power to shut it up. Shut it up or deny that it's your (laughs) cell phone. (laughs) Yeah, you're not trying to be like, (laughs) you're like, what is not? acknowledging that it is your cell phone <laughs> let alone looking to see who's calling you <laughs> oh my god in the middle of a performance yes. i will say i have a story about this um in an orchestra that i will not mention a musician i will not mention i was sitting like uh towards the back of a section once and there was a space oh player goodness. like the the it was the second row of bases and there was this bass player there who's clearly like at a point in his career where he's like uh, does whatever he wants to do right so like at his station like around the stand it's just like it's like i I don't know like his office back there like he's got like snacks he's got his phone sitting there he's got like keys he's got every everything just sitting on the floor in the concert and at some point the phone started to vibrate in the concert i was sitting right next to him and i'm like dude that's stuff of nightmares (laughs) yeah it was like but he just like let it go like because what's he gonna do he's playing the bass like he can't yeah. he's gonna have to clumsily like reach down and silence the focus and sitting on the floor <laughs> like it was ridiculous <laughs> it was ridiculous it's like bass twister yes. you gotta hold the bass yes you're also reaching down utterly ridiculous um so that does happen to some extent it shouldn't happen come on friends we're professionals just leave your phone for in your case yeah, for heaven's sake we're professionals <laughs> yes so um, Gloria and Thomas are, meanwhile, in the audience. He's chatting whilst the music is going on. <laughs> I'm like, this guy. That's okay, he though. He's on I'm one. I'm okay with that. Yeah. It should, be, it should be okay if it's not too loud. Yeah. If it's not distracting. And then the performance is over. It's um kind of anticlimactic because rodrigo is not really happy with the performance no i mean i i think it's funny because in the conversation with gloria and thomas they're talking about the the quality of the orchestra and he says something like well they really backslid after britain britain (laughs) (laughs) and then he's like it's you know it's always two steps forward one step or yeah two steps forward one step back and i'm like that's Okay. I mean, maybe. Do people speak about orchestras in terms like this? Maybe sometimes. But like, do we, it's not like a sporting event where we like no. play a piece and it like screws us up and then we go to the next piece and we're like not as good as we were. <laughs> like, Yeah. It's not, Leah. it's not exactly like that. Backslid. <laughs> <laughs> like you don't really get worse like that. It's that, I don't know. And, and, and maybe it's, okay, like it's funny because we'll have to talk about the sports thing you shared because that was so funny to me the violin guy thing oh anyway but um but i think (laughs) yeah that's maybe it might have something to do with this idea that if a if a person from who's not in our career field is watching they will relate to the concept of like performance wise you know in in a sporting event like a quarterback, for example, they have to have their head in the game. And if they have a bad game, sometimes their head gets get, you know, they get the yips or whatever, and then they don't do well. Right. So maybe it was just like, they were throwing one like that out, like, okay, yeah, their performance wasn't very good. So they're like shaky and they might not do well the next time, but that's not a thing. <laughs> it's not a thing. No. Yeah. No. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. So um, after the show, they're reflecting on it. And, um, and they're kind of wondering, is that because of the looming strike slash negotiations? Mm-hmm. Maybe that's why their head isn't in the game, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And Thomas brings up this really old school yeah. philosophy of the way the conductor should be. And this is where the, oh, we forgot to say that the episode is called Stern Papa. <laughs> I didn't even notice what the episode's name okay. was. Okay. <laughs> it is called Stern Papa uh-huh. and it comes from this conversation. Yes, it does. Where this is the philosophy that the conductor should be a stern father figure that um, kind of rules through fear yeah. and intimidation. Yeah. yeah. And that Rodrigo is becoming too close to the musicians. 
Yeah. And thus is impeding the process. I'm like, that's what's happening. I, yeah, I, I don't, I, I really like kind of bristled at this because I don't agree. I, I don't yeah. think I agree. Yeah. I think, a, yeah. I think a conductor can be a colleague. Yeah. It's tricky though. I, I keep being reminded of your story about a conductor who you ran into kind of backstage yeah. and them just saying how it's a lonely yeah. job. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think there's, there's probably the fear that the lines could get crossed in a way that then, I don't know, limits the capability to lead effectively, you know, but, but I, I feel like this is a more nuanced I think this is a more nuanced situation than we've given it credit for in the past. I think the old school, and we've talked about this before, actually, on a guest episode, the idea, was it the last episode? The idea of feminine leadership versus masculine leadership. Mm -hmm. And that um, maybe feminine leadership looks like it's more collaborative, even from the conductor's podium. Like it doesn't have to be this. Now, I, I think there's like social engagement is really tricky. That's, but that's tricky for musicians too, even though we do it anyway. Um, But I don't know. Yeah. The idea that you have to be sort of like hard on people to get them to do what you want them to do. I don't, I don't think that's, that's antiquated. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Now you shouldn't be going around kissing your musicians (sighs) in full view of everyone else. That might be a boundary crossed. (laughs) Yes. That's a possible me too moment too. Right. You could get in some trouble for that for sure. But like a friendly, a friendly relationship is, I don't know, that feels like it should be the sort of the way of the future. Like if a bunch of orchestra colleagues are sitting somewhere nice, having a drink after the concert and the director's sitting there too, I don't, I don't know. Like, and the conversation is like purely professional. It doesn't seem like a problem to me, to me. Mm-hmm. I'm sure lots of people have opinions on that, but I'm sure, but it wouldn't I'm impede sure my ability to respect that person. No, no. Yeah. Maybe that comes down more to behavior, but anyway, this is, yeah. this is the message Rodrigo is receiving from his mentor, which of course he takes very seriously. And, um, and we're headed for a very uncomfortable scene in a future episode when Rodrigo starts to look at Thomas's compositions because he's, yeah. He's super confident yeah. about them. And that's always a <laughs> it's always a little yeah. bit of at least a yellow flag, if not a red one. Right. Yeah. So Thomas asked Rodrigo to look at his symphony. Yeah, I did an internal cringe. There. I'm gonna cross my fingers that it's good. Maybe it's genius. I hope so. I mean if he if if like Schumann, like, you know. Yeah. Maybe. Guess we'll see. Yes. And then there's like an after hours. Um, encounter where, where, where Rodrigo bikes over to Haley's apartment at three o'clock in the morning. Oh. I wrote, oh my God, this is a booty call <laughs> <laughs> before anything happened. <laughs> Again, boundaries? Boundary? I question mark. <laughs> yes. So he wants to know what the orchestra really thinks of him. And I'm sure that that's something that's on con- conductors' minds. Yeah. And you can't like really ask anyone. Yeah. Um, so she says that they think you're crazy, but they, they believe in you also. And then he said a line, which like, he, he feels like he has to have some distance from mm-hmm. them. And yeah, he says the highest cliff you can fall from is trust. Right. And then closeness and familiarity. From closeness and familiarity comes disrespect. Uh Which again, I just, I'm not sure I totally agree. I mean, I could see why that is a, I could see why that is a belief. I can Mm -hmm. understand why that's a belief. I just don't know that it necessarily, it might be a limiting one. Yes. Yes. (laughs) I would love to see him explore that balance. And I'm sure that we will see that. That's right. In the next subsequent episodes. That's right. 
So we leave this episode with Haley practicing Mahler 1. Yeah, preparing for next week. <laughs> yeah. She can finally play on the softball team. She gets to do softball and Mahler in one week. Isn't that Yay. lovely? <laughs> Protect those fingers, Haley. Yeah, that's right. And your mouth. <laughs> and your mouth. No softballs to the face. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, it's good to be back. Yeah, it was it was a good one. It was kind of like not really any big sparks happening, no. but we're kind of getting reacquainted with the characters and where they are in their lives these days. That's right. So we had to set a new scene. Yeah. yeah had, to, had to lay the groundwork and Yeah. Yeah. So we're, we'll be back with episode two in a few weeks. If you like yes. what we're doing, maybe give us a review. Yes. We'd love that. Rate us five stars. Yeah. If you like it's it helpful. and write us a review mm -hmm. anywhere you listen yep. and follow us on socials and send us messages. Yeah. We love to hear from you. Yeah. We really do. And we promise to try and write back. <laughs> we get overwhelmed sometimes, but <laughs> we, we always appreciate you. We always value you. So thank you yeah. for being a part. Absolutely. We'll talk to you next time. Thank you so much for listening today. If you loved this episode, consider writing us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Spotify, or wherever you listen. Thanks also to our season sponsor, Potter Violins. If you'd like to support the podcast and get access to bonus content, consider joining our Patreon community. You can buy all your musician-centric merch, including shirts, water bottles, koozies, and a variety of other fun items. Our theme music was written and produced by J.P. Wogeman and is performed by Steph and myself. Our episodes are produced by Liz O'Hara and edited by Emily McMahon. Thanks again for listening. Let's talk soon. Bye.